you think that the World Cup helped the casual fan, right? And I'm using quotations, but do you think the World Cup helped, like, I don't know, maybe educate a little bit more um, those those fans that are like on like fringe fans, right? That are like, oh, the World Cup's on, like, sure, I'll watch it, but like, maybe I'm not going to watch soccer for the next four years. Do you think that this World Cup that's coming up in the U.S. is going to be a vehicle for us to get those fans to get more eyeballs on the games? Do you think it's sure. it should? Mm -hmm. it, it should be. I seen a lot of people on Facebook like when they first announced. Well, here in Dallas, you know, AT and T Stadium gonna be yeah. one of the stadiums. Host, so yeah. I seen a Facebook post that said that, and it was a lot of locals like from Dallas. They was like, "Oh, I don't even watch soccer, and I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna make sure that I'm tuned in and Sick. I'm there." Okay. And um, after the past World Cup, you know, the one in Qatar, after that final. That final was so good. Sick. I seen yeah. a whole bunch of people like, bro, I don't like soccer, but that game was live. Even some of my <laughs> yeah. friends, they yeah. hit me up. who like, bro, shot this soccer shit live. And, you know, he don't really <laughs> watch. He don't watch soccer. Nothing like that. He's like, bro, this shit live. So I'm pretty yes, sure sir. when 2026 tune in. And they, they be asking me. They be asking me uh, when you going to take me to a soccer game or whatnot, <laughs> you know. And I be like, all right, them, them, them MLS. Well, I ain't going to say all MLS, but I be like, them FC Dallas games don't be like them games on yeah. tv now because i went to the um i went to the barcelona juventus friendly that was down here in dallas at the cotton Bowl, and they mm -hmm. seen it on my snapchat and stuff like that they always tell me they're like bro you ho bro you know you <laughs> but i was like shoot i don't know i don't know if you want to spend a hundred dollars on a ticket you know this is i mean soccer. i remember that game that belly went crazy yeah he did exactly mm -hmm. and i just reacted to him the day before that they asked oh, did yeah, the day before they on stream, I reacted to him. And when I went there, that's when he he went stupid at the Damn, end. damn, bro. He did. He was he was cutting UV defenders like it was nobody's business, yeah, bro. He was. <laughs> um, it was it was actually insane. I, I, that got me so excited for the season. And then like Barcelona first half of the season kind of shit the bed, but it is what it is. We move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, I mean, like that that's what those are actually really, really great questions. Um, when you know what's gonna get the the average American fan, quote unquote, into this game. Um, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine on this topic and he was telling me, he's like, look, how I would do this is, I don't know if you, you think about it this way. And I'm, I'm curious to, to know who your favorite, you mentioned LeBron being like your goat, who your favorite like individual player is on the soccer spectrum. But, um, he kind of gave me some interesting advice. Like if I, if I was ever talking to, to a casual sports fan would have been like, bro, have them start watching players first. Just like yeah. individual players, right? You mentioned like that yeah. skills, the the ankle breaks and whatnot, and those videos, and how that got you really hyped about the game. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, is there it one? Is there a favorite player that you love to watch? And then I don't know what what made them your favorite player. My favorite player, well, he was before the World Cup happened. After all of that, after Bills and shit to bed and whatnot, my favorite player was Kevin DeBrunner. Like that, oh yeah, shit, Kevin I'm talking about. Every time when I tell my subscribers this, not my subscribers, yeah, I tell my subscribers this story all the time. Me and my girl, we was watching TV and Man City and Newcastle was playing. Mm. And uh, Man City was down, what that was down, 0-2 or something like that? I know they was down substantially. In this, this season, season right? Two -zero. Yeah, it yeah, was this season. Yeah. yeah, they were down 2-0, yeah. Yeah, and they started coming back. And then I was going for Newcastle because I'm still thinking Liverpool is in the running, you know, for the title. <laughs> for they all been there. So I'm going for yeah. Newcastle. And then I told her, I was like, the person who don't need the ball right now is that dude, Kevin DeBrunner, that dude who got it right there. Because wherever he want to pass it to, he go get the ball to him. And as soon as I said that, he did that little <laughs> through ball, ground ball, or whatever to, uh, I forgot who scored that final goal. Was it Bernardo Silva or Gundogan? Uh... It was... For oh, well, the final the final goal of the game came from Newcastle, but they went up oh, okay. three two. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it might have been Bernardo. Yeah, Bernardo. Yeah, they looked through ball that he did to Bernardo, and then he Bernardo scored it. And then she was like, "Damn, he ought to be the best player on the pitch." Is he? And I was like, "Yeah, he's yeah. The best he usually is." Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he usually is, bro. And that's that's kind of cool, man. I don't get a lot of Kevin De Bruyne's, and I think it's because maybe you know people don't want to cheer for. For City, it's like you know the NFL argument. Like people don't want to cheer for the Patriots, bro, because they've been winning for so yeah. long. It's just kind of like annoying to cheer for them. Yeah. Um, and, and equally, I, some of those fans are annoying. But yeah, I like yeah. midfielders, man. I like Luca too. Before Kevin DeBruyne, it was Luca Modric because mm. yeah, the twenty eighteen World Cup was going on, and I just you know changed it on the TV trying to watch something. I forgot which game it was, but I know Croatia was playing. I think it was Croatia and Nigeria. It could have been if they played in twenty eighteen. And Luka Modric was just on the field going crazy. The commentator kept talking about him and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this Luka dude cold. And then when I actually started reacting, they told me to react to him. And I was like, oh, I remember this dude from the 2018 World Cup. So he was just my favorite player by there you default. Go. 
That was the year he won the uh, the Bayon d'Or, Bayon d'Or. and it was to win that to win that in the. I'm not going to call it peak Messi Ronaldo, um, but it still was at a time when Messi Ronaldo dominated those awards. The fact that he took one off of them, bro. Yeah, I mean, crazy. he'll he'll forever be a person who could say he did that. Which which I think the only other player that could say he did that was Kaká. Kaká sure. before them, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>